It really doesn't matter how long you've used Linux. There are several things when it comes to Linux, open source software, being in the Linux community, things that you just shouldn't do. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And I don't want to take like the moral high ground and pretend that I've never done some of these things because I absolutely have. But it's more of a do as I say, not as I do type of thing, if you will. So what I want to talk about today are a few things that I just think that you should absolutely not do if you are using Linux or open source software. So some of these are very specific to Linux. Some of them are more broad. So let's just go ahead and jump in. The first thing is don't get caught up in elitism. Whatever you use does not make you better than anybody else. It really, really doesn't. If you're a Gentoo user, first of all, fantastic for you. You did a good job installing that thing. You accomplished something that not many people actually do. However, just because you've done so doesn't make you better than someone who uses Arch or Ubuntu or Elementary OS. It really, really doesn't. What you use does not have any impact over your superiority on other people. It doesn't play any factor into that at all. In fact, if you look down on people for using something other than you, that says more about you than it does about them. So at the end of the day, elitism doesn't do anything for anyone. All it does is make you look like a douchebag. So don't be an elite douchebag. That's the first one on the list, and it seems pretty obvious to me. The second one on the list is more about technology and how you use your computer. And this one, too, also seems pretty obvious. Don't delete things that you don't know what they are. If you don't know what something is, don't delete it. It seems pretty obvious, but I guarantee that the vast majority of people who are watching this video right now have done this. And it really doesn't matter what operating system you're on. If you've used a computer before, you've deleted something that you shouldn't delete. And I'm really not talking about like pictures or stuff like that. I've talked about this before, but I'm really talking about stuff that has to do with how your computer works. And it's more of a danger when it comes to using Linux because you are probably going to mess around in the root file system at some point during your Linux career, and you're going to get into the Etsy directory and delete something that you probably shouldn't delete, and your computer is going to die. Well, I mean, it's not going to die, but you're going to end up having to do some troubleshooting or reboot or do a nuke and pave something and you're not going to be a happy camper. So don't delete something unless you absolutely know you should be able to delete it. The third one on the list is don't be afraid to distro hop. I've talked about this on the channel before too. A lot of people seem to think that the first distribution that they try, if it works really well for them, they should just stick there. And that's a fine way to live your life. But don't be afraid, even if your distribution is working fine, to distro hop and try something new. On the other side of the same coin, however, don't have expectations that what you're switching to is going to be better than what you left behind. Always manage your expectations and you won't be disappointed. Linux, for the most part, is Linux no matter what distro you're using. So just know that if you do distro hop, you're probably going to have the same kind of experiences you had on the last distro you're on. It's just going to be a matter of package management and things like that. So just kind of don't be afraid to distro hop, but don't also expect the moon when you do distro hop. The fourth one on the list is something that I've actually made a video about before, like a whole dedicated video, and that is to not use sudo unless you know what the hell you're doing. It, upon your first run of something when you use the sudo command, it says that you should know exactly what you're doing and why you need to use sudo, and I fully agree with that. I think that Sudo is probably the most dangerous command you're ever going to run across on your Linux machine because it allows you to do things under the root account. It gives you all of the privileges of the root user, and that means that you can delete things that you shouldn't be able to delete. It means that you can move things that you shouldn't be able to move, and it means you can install things that you probably shouldn't install. So always, always know exactly what you're using sudo for. And this is specifically a rough one because a lot of people, when they first start using Linux, will find something they don't know how to do, and then they will Google it, and they will find a random Joe Schmo's blog on the internet because that Joe Schmo is really, really good at SEO, and they will follow directions on Joe's blog, and one of those commands will say sudo apt whatever, and they'll just copy and paste that thing into their machine and they have no clue what it's actually doing. This is not okay. Okay. You should always, 
always know exactly what those commands do before you paste them into your terminal. Always. And if that blog doesn't explain exactly what it's supposed to do, find yourself a different blog because obviously Joe doesn't know his shit. Okay? So just make sure Joe knows what he's talking about before you follow his commands. And you can usually find this out by double checking. Go to another blog outside of Joe's, find Bob's blog, and then see, make sure that Bob has the exact same instructions. Because for the most part, while there are multiple ways of doing things on Linux, usually there's a one way that most people use, and that's usually the way that people write their blog articles because they want the most the most popular way. Uh, in order to draw in views. So if both of those blogs agree this is the way to do something, you're probably safe to do it. But again, make sure you understand what's going on. It's going to save you some hassle in the future. If you run a command that you don't know what's going on and something goes wrong, it's only going to be your fault. So number five on the list is going to be one that's going to get me into a lot of trouble with people in my audience because I claim to be a FOSS advocate and I want as many people to use open source software as possible. And I think that open source is good for the world and good for most people. And that there are a ton of open source alternatives to a ton of proprietary software that are just perfectly fine and will get the job done for the vast majority of people. That being said, don't be afraid to use proprietary software if you need to. It's just kind of the way some people just have to do their work. So for example, I have to use Google Docs. My work that I do for actual money is a place that really doesn't give a crap about Linux or open source or privacy or any of that stuff. They don't care. They use Google Docs because it's free, or mostly free, I suppose, and it's easy to use and easy to collaborate with other people, right? That's why they use it. So we have to use Google Docs, and Google Docs is about the most proprietary piece of software you're ever going to find. So... I have to use that. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. There are other things that I have to use that are proprietary, or at least that I want to use that are proprietary. Things like Discord. I'm on Discord pretty much every single day, and Discord's proprietary. I think I happen to think that it's really good. It obviously has its flaws, but there isn't an alternative that is as good as Discord. I know people are going to say, well, why don't you use Matrix? Why don't you use Element? Why don't you use whatever? Social media is only good when there's a lot of people around. So... That's kind of the reason why I use Discord. It's proprietary, and it's stealing all my data. I know it is, but I still want to use it. Something like Todoist is a proprietary piece of software. I still use it, or at least I did up until a few days ago. I mean, I could come up with a few examples of proprietary software that I have to use, and I don't think that that makes me any less of an open source advocate. I don't think that it makes me any less of a Linux user. I just happen to think that you use the tool that is best for the job, and sometimes that just means using a closed source piece of software. And that's okay. Don't make other people f make you feel bad for doing so. If you are upset that you have to use proprietary software, search for an alternative, and maybe there will be one that will make you happy. I've searched for open source alternatives to a lot of my applications. Sometimes I've found them, sometimes I haven't. That's just kind of the way things go. And you can hope for, in the future, new applications popping up that will be able to fill in the void. But don't feel guilty that you have to use proprietary software for some things if that's the only tool that will actually do the job in the way you want it done. So those are the five things I say not to do. Now, like I said, some of them are superfluous. Some of them are more technological in nature. So it was kind of all over the place. But I think that they are fairly general and that they apply to a lot of people. So in the comments section below, if you have things that people shouldn't do, like don't watch Matt's YouTube channel anymore because he says use proprietary software, you can leave those comments in the comment section below. I, I would gladly give that comment a star, I suppose, or a hard or whatever the hell they're called. Uh, do that in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the LinuxCast, just like all of these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all amazing people. It really does uh, shock me that so many people support me, so it, I'm really, really grateful for that. So thanks everybody for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.